Hello, this is the sixth tutorial in the series and today we're going to be finishing the first part of the series which is creating the room itself. Uh, what we did until this point is create or model the room itself, then we added uh, lighting to the scene, then we added textures and materials to the scene, then we added windows and openings to the scene and the balcony itself. And now we're going to finalize it by adding background to our viewport. So after we added the background, the room itself will be essentially finished. And the next parts of this series will be about adding and creating modeling and texturing uh, things that go inside the room, like furniture or uh, lighting fixtures uh, or uh, plants and things like that. Alright, so let's finish this by adding background. The first thing I want to do is go to the front viewport and create a plane. This plane needs to be big because it's the whole background of the image. And I don't need the segments, so I'm going to put the segments on one. And I need to take this in the top viewport, this plane, and take it back so it's behind the sun. And I'm going to rotate it so it will be in front of the camera. Basically 90 degrees to the camera. So, so that the image won't be perspectively... Uh, the perspective of the background image won't be uh, changed. And now after I uh, place the background here, I'm going to call it background. And the next thing is I'm going to go to the camera. As you can see, you don't see anything. You don't see the background in the camera viewport. This is because in the camera we use the option cap. Clip, I'm sorry. We clipped the uh, near plane so that we could place the camera outside of the room. We covered this in previous tutorials. But when you clip with the camera, uh, there is also the far clipping, which clips the far end of the camera view. Which means that if our plane is placed here and the far clip is here, you won't see this plane because it's uh, behind the clipping plane. What I need to do to fix this is up the value of the far clipping, like so, so it will be behind the background plane. Now if you go to the camera viewport, you can see the background plane. It's too small, but you can see it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it much larger, so it covers the windows and all the openings. I'm going to make it higher, so it covers everything nicely, like so. Now our plane is aligned. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that our sun and our uh, sky dome uh, won't be interrupted by this plane. For instance, if I place this plane somewhere here uh, and I render the image, the sun will intersect with the plane and the sun rays won't go inside the room. So effectively our plane is messing with our scene. This is something we don't want. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to make sure that for the sun and for the sky dome, this plane does not exist. How we do this? We go to the sun, we go to exclude, and we're going to exclude the background plane. Now shadow casting and illumination is excluded by the sun so effectively this plane is invisible and does not exist for this sun I'm going to do the same thing for the sky dome I'm going to exclude it the background so even if this interrupts the sun or interrupts the sky dome it, uh, it's, it doesn't exist for the both of them so it's fine, it's, it doesn't matter where you put the plane now. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in object properties and I'm going to make sure that our back plane won't receive or cast shadows, it won't apply atmosphere and it will be in, won't be inherent visibility. 
What this means is this plane, this background plane, will only be visible to camera and visible to reflection refractions like the floor, for instance. And that's the only thing we need this plane to do, only to be visible to the camera. We don't need it to uh, interfere with the lighting in our scene in any way. So we disabled everything except this two. The next thing I'm going to right click and go to view ray properties and disable the generate global illumination and receive global illumination again so this won't interfere with the global illumination in the scene. Now this plane does not interfere with anything. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the texture to the background plane. In order to find a good texture for our scene I'm going to search for country back Round. You can search for anything you like until you find the background you like. Uh, I like the backgrounds that are uh, present when I uh, click country backgrounds. So I guess I'm going to choose this one. This one looks nice for the lighting in our scene, which is a day scene. I'm going to save this on the desktop. You can save it wherever you want. And now I'm going to apply it to a material, to a standard material. I'm going to explain in a couple of minutes why I'm using a standard material and not a V-Ray material for this. I'm going to use the standard, you can use which material you want because it's only a reference. You were not going to use it during rendering. I'm going to put in the diffuse slot the sky. Alright, I just downloaded. Now as you can see it's on the material. I'm going to check the show shaded material in viewport so I can see the bitmap I just put here in the viewport. And I'm going to drag and paste it on the background. Now as you can see there is a background in our viewport. I'm going to align it a little bit. I'm going to the perspective viewport and as you can see it's a little bit to the width and the length are not proportionate so I need to make it a little bit higher something like this and I'm going to the camera viewport again I'm going to take it a little bit up not too much because as you can see we have a balcony in our scene which means we are on the second or more floor so it can be like this because we're not uh, on the first floor on the ground level we need to go maybe like this, so you can see a little bit of grass, the trees and skies everywhere, which is perfect for us. Alright, after I aligned the background, what I need to do is give it a real material, and not the standard material we use, because if I render it as is, it will interfere with the rendering. The rendering, uh, it might be okay, but uh, it's better to use only V-Ray materials. The material I'm going to use for this example is V-Ray Light Material. What th this material does is create basically a light source. So uh, the same as this plane uses uh, this V-Ray light, uh, emits light from it, this uh, material emits light from it. So we're going to use this one because uh, the picture we're using is perfect as is. We don't need to change it by adding shadows to it and things like that. We need to use the original image and in order to do this we need to use it as a, a light uh, material because a normal material will receive shad shadows and things like that and plus you can play with the brightness of the image if it's too dark so that's good. I'm going to copy this in this channel now we have a light material with our image we need for the background and I'm going to copy and drag it here. Now as you can see everything is white now. This is the reason I use the standard material before I change it to this, let's call it background, to this V-Ray light material. Because for some reason since Max 2012 and V-Ray 1.5, if I'm not mistaken, there is a bug that uh, if you put a V-Ray light material in your scene doesn't matter if you click this uh, show uh, shaded material in viewport or not you cannot see the material itself you see only a white plane uh, I don't really know why that is but 
that's the reason I use a standard material in order to move the image and uh, align it correctly and then I change it to a V-Ray light material for the final rendering. Now let's try rendering a region here and see if the brightness of the background is what we are looking for or we need to make it brighter or darker. Alright, this is enough. As you can see, if you look at the image itself compared to this, it's very dark. We need to make it twice as bright. So I'm going to go back. Let's try rendering now. Very nice, I think the brightness is okay. That's fine, let's try looking at this side by side. Yeah, the brightness is fine. 2 as a multiplier of the light material is okay. And now, if we render the whole image, you will see the finished room. But before we do that, there is a pro problem at this region. As you can see, or not see, there is no tree here. The tree at the background continues from here to here, but there is no tree here. Something, something happened at this, this region. And what happened is, you have a cross section of three layers of glass here. Uh, what I mean by that is, you have the glass of this door, the sliding door to the left, you have the glass of the sliding door to the right, and you have behind it the glass of the rail. So the reason you see trees here, here and here is here there is only the glass of the rail and then the background image. At this region there is only the uh, glass of the door, sliding door. Behind it there is a glass of the railing and then you see the background image. So there are two layers of glass here. Uh, same thing th at this region, you have two layers of glass, you have the door glass and the railing glass, but here, at this region where you cannot see the tree, you have three layers of glass, you have the glass, the doors intersect each other, so, so you have the glass of the front door, you have the glass of the back door, and you have the glass of the railing. So the depth of the uh, transparency is, uh, is high. What you need to do to fix this is go to the glass material and in the refraction, which is the transparency value, you have a maximum depth. This is the depth uh, of the transparency. After this number of layers, we have only three layers here, so I don't know why five isn't enough, but it doesn't matter. After a certain number of depth of layers uh, of glass, one on top of each, uh, each other, uh, the refractivity stops working, so you don't see the background itself. To fix this, you need to up the maximum depth value. Let's make it 10. And now if we render it, you can see the tree behind it, so it's fine. So if you have problems with a refraction, with the transparencies in your scene, that the materials or things do not come through, uh, the problem is probably the maximum depth, so, so just make it higher. Of course, it's, uh, it makes the rendering time higher. The higher this value, the higher the rendering time. So make sure to up this only if you have problems in your scene. Same thing about the reflection. If you have corrupt ref reflections in your scene, or something doesn't reflect correctly, maybe you have many layers of reflection in your scene, and the depth, maximum depth is not high enough. So, just up the value. Alright, let's try rendering the room as it is now.